Welcome back to Santapod for round two of the 2017 ACU Super Street Bike Drag Series. We're at the bike only race, rock and ride event and we have five full qualifying sessions scheduled before tomorrow's eliminations. And with 12 riders entered for an eight bike elimination, four won't even make it into the field. Well, round one was won by Pete Field, who leads the points table, with Rick Stubbins in second place. But we've got several new or returning riders entered this weekend, including Matthias Bolin from Sweden. I'm Steve Mead. I've been doing this probably 10 years on and off. Maybe not always on Super Street Bike, but that, that kind of stuff. My name is Robert Nielsen and I come from Sweden. The bike is a uh, Suzuki Hayabusa from the start and that is a 68 inches bike. It's Gemma Venables and I'm on a Super Street Bike, which is a Gixxer. Unfortunately, the weather is set to make a huge impact on this weekend with heavy rain threatened on qualifying day. So into Q1 and no one knows just how many sessions we're going to get. Starting off with round one winner Pete Field. Cold track here this morning and not much rubber down yet. Bit of a wiggle going on there and recording an 8.08 at just 156 miles per hour. First outing this year for Steve Mead on the Hayabusa. Making sure I can remember what to do and what buttons to press and you know that that kind of thing and just 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 getting comfortable on the bike again really this this meeting you don't have time to think about it if it doesn't come natural you didn't you got no chance you know it's, it gets busy it gets busy in whatever time it is seven seven and a half seconds or whatever ah uh, but problems this time round for steve looking good here for daniel donat lengsis up to the strike recording a 7.49 and first outing this year for Ven Racing's Gemma Venables. Yeah, just getting the confidence back for the season and I get there. It's a little bit nerve wracking but it, as soon as you get down to the track you do, everything comes back and it's yeah, just natural. But unfortunately no time recorded on this pass for Gemma. Next up, it's Grand Dance on the Suzuki TL100R. We've been chasing a high boost misfire for the last 18 months, and we finally got it down to um, a, an ignition wheel pickup problem, which we've redesigned, remachined, got it going. First pass, a um, little bit of wheel spin, but no misfire. So um, we're very happy having cured the problem. <laughs> Graham Belchin on the green Kawasaki ZX12 and recording a slow for him, 8.29. One of the favourites now, Rick Stubbins on the Hayabusa. And he's putting in a storming run for these conditions. Yes, it's a 7.24 at 196 miles per hour. Sweden's Robert Nilsson up next. Uh, my hope is to uh, drive uh, new PBs, so... Uh, and uh, and uh, doing well on the main event. My personal best is uh, 7.21 and that I was running in October here in Santa Pod. And this time Robert records a time of 7.73. The next member of the Venn racing team, Steve Venables. Well, we've been looking at the data and obviously we've noticed a few errors that we've made and, you know, we've gone back, we've, we've done a lot of bench testing now. And then that first run just then, our boost is absolutely tracking perfect now. The fueling's great, so I'm hoping if the weather stays away, we should start improving and you'll start seeing some better numbers. Gary Bow looking good here. Oh, this 7.49 is good for second position at the moment. And last out this session is Matthias Bolin. 
So after Q1, this is how the table looks, but you can bet there'll be some potent tunes put in for the next session. So into Q2, and it must make it harder for the Venables, building two bikes. It definitely does. Gemma's been away from the bike since September last year, so, we, you know, I'm nervous, she's nervous. <laughs> so, you know, I've got to think about her bike as well as mine. So it does make it a bit more complicated, as we're both running different ECUs and you go into one laptop and everything's different. So it's Gemma Venables in the right lane, Graham Balchin in the left lane, neither of these yet in the field. And a small wheelie from Graham at half track looks to have unsettled the bike a bit, improving slightly to a 788. Gemma needs quicker than an 808 to qualify, but she's still on the outside. Pete Field in the right lane, Robert Nilsson left lane. Pete is right on the bump spot at the moment, so needs to improve somewhat. But that's not happening this time, off the power at half track. But improvement for Robert with that 749. Steve Mead, right lane. Steve Wood on the Street Lightning Suzuki in the left lane. Woody with that very distinctive paint job there. The bump spot down to a 795 now. And off they go. Good straight runs, but not quick enough to get in the eight bike field at the moment. Sweden's Matthias Bolin left lane, Graham Dance in the right lane. Oh, but problems at the hit for Graham. And no improvement for Robert on his previous 757. Hope that's not damaged for Graham. Rick Stubbins on the Protec racing machine and Steve Venables in the far lane. Rick in top spot at the moment. He really got a handle on the track early on. Oh, but Rick's motor lets go, and that's a huge trail of oil behind him. Cleanup ensued, and with the weather closing in rapidly. Well, with Daniel Donat Lenksis the last man to run, just look at that sky. He's safely in at number four. Currently, no improvement for him. And sure enough, the heavens opened soon after this, and that was it for qualifying on the Saturday. No, the track didn't hold it. Well, not for me anyway. Um, first pass, it just spun on the hit, run over. Second pass. It drove through first gear, it was turning the tyre, but as soon as I hooked second, it started to spin, then it wheelied, and then it, the run went, then the run was all over. And just the cap, it all went through the finishing line, and the chain came off. Split, split, the split link failed, and the chain came off, and it went straight into Gemma's lane. Gemma had to miss it. So I got told off for that. <laughs> well, you're in the field at the moment, okay, but there's still a few more people who, obviously, yeah. if you've got better track conditions, they're going to move up. So do you play it safe on this one, or do you really try and go for it a little bit? No, I've got to get a clean pass in. I've, got, I've taken all the power out in first gear. I've just got to get down the track. I've just got to get a clean pass in. If it goes clean, this should be like a 740. 
So the table after Q2 looks like this, with last round's winner Pete Field not qualified at the moment. Um, we, we basically tried something new just to get it up the track, um, banking on having five qualifiers, but it didn't work, so we've gone back to settings from last time. So hopefully it'll get up the track today. So presumably the conditions today, it is drier, a lot of sun on the track, so it's going to be more like it was at Easter. Yeah, it can't be any worse than yesterday, it was, it was horrible. So we're, we're hoping it'll, it'll stick, uh, just get to the end of the track. But even so, I'm guessing you're not going to go absolutely mad and throw it all up because you've got one chance, haven't you, really? Yeah, no, there's a very mild setting in it. Hopefully a, a mid-7-3, um, if not a little bit quicker. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, third engine change in two meetings. We, um, well, I made a mistake again, um, which, you know, everything's got to be 100%. I, I, um, we had a rattle in the, we fired it up down in the road to do our second run and we had a, a rattle in the engine. We rushed back up here to try and see if we could sort it, hoping for a rain off, which we actually had. But um, once we got it, we, we took all the casings off looking in starter clutches and cams out, everything, couldn't find this noise. We took the engine out, got it all on the floor ready to put the new engine in and we realised there was a bolt had come out of the alternator. So <laughs> we bolted it all back up, washed it out, put it all back together, put the same engine back in and. Here we are, we're ready to go again. So, Sunday morning, and as the bike show sets up, the news came that due to the weather, there would be no more qualifying. So, championship leader Pete Field is out of competition, along with Gemma Venables, Steve Wood and Steve Mead. And with very different track conditions expected, there's going to be a lot of guesswork in choosing a tune setting for the first round of eliminations. So, first pair out is second qualifier, Robert Nilsson in the left lane, and eighth qualifier, Graham Balchin. Oh, Graham pulls a great hole shot there, gaining a tenth over Robert, looking close down the track, and yes, Graham takes the win by inches, a 7.42 beats the quicker 7.32. Uh, it got to about the eighth mile and he, could see, he, he started an inch in front of me and then by about a thousand foot I was reeling him in and I was just hanging in there thinking, come on, just a bit more, just a bit more, just a bit and I just got him at the end. Uh, well, we didn't know at the time who'd won. It was, well, it was about seven inches, wasn't it, at the finish line? So I presume that means there's another difficult race coming up now then? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they don't get any easier. <laughs> Second pair, it's Daniel Donat Lengsis left lane against Mateus Bolin in the right lane. Oh, but Mateus throws it away with a red light on the start line. But a great time for Daniel, 7.25 at 198 miles per hour. Rick Stubbins, left lane, Graham Dance in the right lane. Rick's out in front right from the start, and he holds on to take the win with a 7.21. I've got a setup that'll do um, like 7.20s most places, so uh, I'll just, I'm just sort of trying to improve it from there now. Now we've got a good day today, I'll we'll try and push it forward a little bit more. I believe we've got a six second pass in there. Uh, the Easter meeting showed us some potential for that so uh, if I don't do it this meeting I'm hoping for the main event. Yeah we've sorted out our problems that we've had for over a year um, so we're reasonably happy we didn't get the track time we wanted but you know that's the weather for you and you can't predict that so uh, yeah we'll be at the Summer Nationals. Final first round pair and it's Steve Venables in the right lane and Gary Bow in the left lane And a wheelie there from Steve. 
This is close up to the stripe. Gary takes the win with a great 710 out of 205 against a hard charging 728 for Steve. Yeah, we, um, we, we have more than one tune up in the bike and um, we went with a safe one, what we'll call th number three out of, out of five. Um, two being the, uh, one being the, the fastest tune up and we got down to the line and the two bikes in front of us um, both gripped and hooked up so we we um, changed to number two and put a bit of a wilder setting in it and went 710 205 which is took Steve Venables out I was always a tricky he's a tr tricky guy to race you've got to try and get your head into gear before you get down there and only 10 minutes beforehand we thought we were going out we had it all set up for another qualifying run to try and take number one qualifier back and then all of a sudden we have to change into race mode and you know, then you've got to start. You've got to get your start line practices right. You've got to cut lights, and I think Steve went to 0 0.09 reaction time, and I went to 0 0.08. So like one hundredth of a second between us on the start line. So then, you know, it's just who gets it right on the run. And we obviously had a wilder setting in than him, and you know, we we took him out. So. Well, out of competition now, and a test run for Pete Field and Steve Mead. And how Pete must wish he could have had one extra qualifying pass. This run would have put him in the field for sure. Bike is going well? Yes, now it's well working. <laughs> and you're enjoying racing in this series in England? Yeah, we also, yeah, we always, sorry, we always enjoy to be here, yes. And I'm guessing you are hoping you're going to do really well next week for the FIM Championship as well. Fingers crossed, <laughs> yes. Do you know who you've got next round? Rick Stubbins. Yeah. It's hard run. <laughs> and their English is improving with each visit to Santa Pod. So after a few I'm at Santa Pod pickies, it's semi-final time. First pair being Gary Bow and Graham Balchin. Lots of rubber put down in the burnouts from both riders, then up to the line. Well, it's looking even down the track, but Graham starting to pull away, and he takes the win with a 7.47 against a losing 7.61. Hungary's Daniel Donatlenksis in the right lane, Rick Stubbins in the left lane, and a 0-7 light from Rick puts him in the lead from the off, and holding on to win with a 7.21 against a losing 7.68. So. Started racing about 29 years ago, and I've always raced the GSX 1100EF engine, and um, we haven't changed that, but we've just machined everything to suit and most people use a Hayabusa engine we use the old EF oil cooled engine and um, it just means that we have to uh, find our own settings and our own way it takes longer I think we're down on peak horsepower a little bit but we run a Rickard Gustafsson cylinder head which is the same as he runs on his funny bike and he's run six threes at 220 miles an hour so ultimately we think we've got it in the bike to unlock it um, so we run E85 ethanol, we also run nitrous oxide injection, uh, we run a BTC Moto uh, NLR air clutch. Um, so we think our combination's pretty good. We have a one-off chrome molly chassis, um, so we pick up a bit of weight advantage on the high buses. So um, yeah, just watch this space, we're a work in progress. Most people run a, an intercooler or a charge cooler, um, but the extra power that we use, we use the nitrous oxide, which also has a cooling effect to the charge. So um, yeah, my bike was designed as a nitrous bike originally, so we don't have a lot of space to put charge coolers and intercoolers on, so I've always liked nitrous oxide, so we kept with it. We make most of the power with the boost, and we only add, at the moment, 50 horsepower. Time for the all-important final then. Graham Balchin will take the right lane, Rick Stubbins the left.
and on board with Graham here. Oh, and Graham smokes the tyres right after the launch. That gives it to Rick, who is already 10 bike lengths ahead. And Rick takes the event win with a 7.35 at 198 to Graham's losing 7.91. And on board with Graham, you can hear the revs rise as the wheel breaks traction. So, two events and two different winners. But that win moves Rick to the top of the table. Yeah, we've got the consistency, we just need to step it up a little bit more now. I think, uh, I'm hoping that the next uh, events track will be good and we can push it a bit harder. Going to be a lot of stiff competition at that one though. Yeah, there is, yeah. So, um, I just hope I can do well, that's all I can say really. Well, our next visit to Santa Pod will be next week for the FIM European Super Street Bike Cup round and then back to ACU action at the SPRC Summer Nationals in June. We'll see you soon.